Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to which one. Now I've got two brushes I'm going to run through with you today. Two are sort of about the same sort of price point, same needle and nozzle setups and I'll move over to the easel in a bit and we'll do some little spray outs with both of these brushes. Now a little bit about the brushes that we're looking at today, we are looking at the Harder and Steenbeck Evolution Silverline FPC 2-in-1 airbrush. Now that's the actual brush. This brush I have owned for 12 years, so this is a 12 year old brush and it is still going strong. So there's one thing to look at. The other brush that we're looking at is the Creos PS270. Now this one's two years old now, coming up two and a half years old. So for the first winner on lasting, it's gotta be the H&S. We'll see in 12 years if this is still going, but the H&S is still going and still works. May look a little bit tired, but this brush still works. So a little bit more about the H&S. As I say, I've owned this 12 years. It still works. Now, the things that I've rated on this, I've got the new needle and nozzle setup. So I've got the V2 needle and nozzle in this, which is the better tapered needle and different nozzle. So I've upgraded it. When you buy these originally, you will get two cups. You get the smaller cup and you get the bigger cup, which you can screw on and off, which is good when you are, say, going in on detail and you want to use a smaller cup, get a little bit more visibility when you're looking. The cup is lower. You can also buy the micro cups for these which screw on and it gives you a really shallow cup so it looks like you can just look straight down the body and you've got no cup visible or you can use it like that with a couple of drops of paint to the top and work it like that so you get two cups with it you get two needle setups with this as well you get a 0.2 and you get a 0.4 so you can interchange and that's one thing i do like about h&s you can interchange the needle and nozzles, so you can turn this to like an infinite if you like, that real small needle and nozzle setup like the 0.15, you can do that as well. Another little bonus to this brush, you get your adjuster to the back so you can dial your trigger in. You get a Mac valve to the body here, so you can dial your air pressure in on the body here, which works guys. So for the price of 155 99 you're getting two airbrush setups <clears throat> with a 0.2 and a 0.4. You get two cup sizes, you get your adjuster to the back and you get a built-in sort of mac valve to the body here. So it's a good brush guys and as you can see, I've still got it after 12 years. Yes, I have changed things on this like the needle and the nozzle, but the actual website that I'm gonna put links to you can get all the spares for these it's been a good brush it, it's lasted it's still going now it may look a little bit tarnished and the insides tarnished inside the cup but you'll see how it performs in a minute so that's the Hardware Steam Evolution Silverline FPC 2-in-1 V2 airbrush that's that one there moving on to the Creos now so we're looking at the PS270. Now I've done reviews on this guys and I rate it, I really do. Absolutely love this brush. So I'll give you a little talk through this. This is a 0.2 needle and nozzle setup. Nice chrome body. As I say, this is coming up two and a half years old now and works brilliantly and looks absolutely mint. These are coming in at 134.99, so it's a little bit cheaper than the H&S. You only get one cup which is fitted to the tops of these. You only get one needle size that comes with this brush, but it's a 0 0.2, so I'm basing it on both being 0.2s. You get your adjuster to the back, which is a better adjuster on this and easier to handle than the one on the H&S. It's just a lot more smoother to dial in on the back. You've got a Mac valve to the front of the brush instead of being on the body here. Now, after using the Creos range, I've got the 771 and the 270. I really like the Mac valves to the front 
because it's sort of here as you're holding the brush and you can dial it in as you go along. On the H&S, when you're holding the brush, your hands are on it. Your hands are round, and your fingers sort of go round that Mac valve. So you're having to stop, dial this in, press and dial it in with your other hand. When you can be holding your brush with the 270, work and dial in as you go with your other hand like that. It's sort of off the body where your fingers are grabbing the body there. So that's the one thing I do like about this. The other thing I like about this as well is the sloped body here. It's nice and comfortable in your hand. The trigger slightly slopes down. So for the price, it's I think it's an easier brush to get on with, as in the features that are on it are a little bit easier to use than the H&S. The H&S benefits from the cups interchanging, the needles, the nozzles, all interchanging. The stripping down of the H&S is easier than the Creos. It's a lot easier to strip a H&S down. All the H&S's are dead easy to strip down and put back together. Build quality on the H&S, it's lasted 12 years, guys. Now this is two and a half years, so I can only tell in time on how this will be, but that, has been robust and has lasted 12 years. So that's a bit about both brushes. Both of these brushes are on the links in the description, guys. So if you want to go over, just click the link. It will send you straight to the page and you can read the whole write-up. Both brushes on this site, you can get all the spares for, not a problem. And the spares for both brushes are coming out reasonable. You'll find that the Creos will come out a little bit cheaper than the H&S, but as I say, you can get all the spares and they do a range of brushes as well. You've not just got to look at the H&S of this one and you've not just got to look at the Creos in this one. They do others in the ranges. So I'll set you up on the easel, we'll chuck some paint down these and we'll just show you what these two 0.2 airbrushes can accomplish. See you in a minute. Right guys, we are going to be testing the first brush and we've got the H&S Silverline Solo on a 0.2. Now I'm going to put the same paint in both of these brushes. I'm going to be running 25 down the main line, down to the brush, and then we can dial in on the valves on both brushes. So crown cap off the front of both of these as well. So we'll do some little dots. And work up so atomizes really well the HS do work really well guys and they do atomize the paint really well as you can see full back nice coverage on there nice atomization on the soft edges of these dots And you will find, I'm getting used to this, because I've not used the H&S for so long. Both brushes will get super down. Now this brush does get ridiculously down, guys, on detail. Once you get that trigger movement dialed in, This thing really does go super down. I mean, that is ridiculously pen like fine pencil line down and does it really, really easy as well with this brush. These were my go-to brushes. I started out my career with H&S so I know how they work. You will find it feels like you've got a little bit of delay in the trigger, but this seems to be absolutely on point. It really does. It's working incredible. 
it's incredible and this is 12 years old guys this is this has been battered as i say i started my career off with these brushes and i'll never part with this one because this was a gift off my wife at the time and it just performs brilliant it really does i mean they are ridiculously super fine dagger strokes on this and this has got the new version needling which is a better needle and nozzle and you know the difference straight away just super fine atomizes really well as you can see the softness on them shading there like that so all in all a very good brush robust yes it's 12 years old guys so it, it's definitely robust it's gonna last you it's lasted me you'll change some bits along the way but i think the only thing you'll be changing will be a needle if you dink it a nozzle because <clears throat> they're brass they're quite soft and you can sometimes if you're pushing your needle too close to the front too hard you can just split the nozzles at the front but all in all it's a good airbrush a solid airbrush and I've still got it. So that's the H&S guys. The Silverline Solo works really well. You've got your air adjust here. That's the only thing I'm not too keen about on these. You can dial that in. Just turn that down a bit and we'll just see how that performs. And again, that's with the air pressure right down and that is super fine guys it's really good on a point two if you go for the 0 0.15 you've really got to dial your paints in if you go down the next size small needle size you really have got to start thinning your paints down guys to get it to flow right i would say these brushes work best in the point two it's a great needle setup in the H&S is the point two, and you'll get serious down with your detail. If you need them tiny little dots and lines, you're going to get on with this brush. It will do it, not a problem. But as I say, dial your painting if you're using acrylics. Inks will work nice and flow really nice. Solvents flow really nice in these. So a good brush, guys. It really is for the price as well for what you're getting it. At 155, I think I said it was. It's a no-brainer, it's a good brush, and that's 12 years old. So for 155 quid for 12 years of work. Cheap as chips. So yeah, that's the HS. We'll move on to the Creos. Now what I'll do is I will use the paint out of the HS. Just to show we're going to use the same paint, I will transfer that paint into that brush and we'll crack on with the demo with the Creos now same running pressure now if you've not used a Creos I guarantee it when you pick one of these brushes up you instantly you pick it up and think oh this is nice it's that slope on the body I think that just makes this brush feel really nice. It puts your, makes your hands sit further back, feels like it's sitting further back, which gives you more room here. So when you put your other hand up to the brush, you can then dial in on your Mac valve and you can steady it yourself as you go along. So crown cap off. Right, same again, we'll go in on some dots. And the needle just needs locating. These have just been cleaned, both of these. I've just done the video on the ultrasonic and I've put both brushes through the ultrasonic cleaner and it works great, guys. That's on the channel, that's just gone up. So we'll just do a little dot test. And again, Now, atomization, H&S is better. Out of the two brushes, 
that's full back these feel a little bit more raw sort of they get a bit more paint out i think the hns does it a little bit more finesse it's a softer than the creos so it atomizes the hns atomizes a little bit better but both brushes get super down guys again and out the two same paint the H&S will get you down just that little bit finer on your lines I'm going right up and pulling minimal back on this trigger Yeah, the H&S goes down finer on lines. I'm trying my hardest to get real tight lines with this. And I might even have to just drop the fluid down a little bit in this as well. Thin it a bit. Yeah, it's getting the same same sort of line. The H&S was a lot, I mean, these lines here are very slightly breaking up on the real tiny lines. H&S, absolutely crystal clean line. It, it does atomize the paint better out the two brushes and I can see that between that, that, them lines and these lines. But, a great brush again I've done reviews on this Creos and it is a brilliant brush guys for the money it works it's comfortable I prefer the body shape on this I prefer the trigger on this I like the Mac valve where it is on this to dial it in it's a lot easier dialing it here than trying to dial here Now I've dialed that air in. This is working a bit better now. Just getting your paint consistency right. This is old paint. This golden that I'm using here is very old. And it's not as good as a new bottle. But we can't blame the paint. Well, you can blame the paint. I know what fresh golden is like when you spray it. But a great brush. It really is. They're both great brushes. But atomization, I've got to give it to the H&S. I really have. Just looking on these two here and down on the lines, the H&S with the same paint consistency. Absolutely nailed them real fine lines. Then the Creos just sort of hesitated a bit but then once we dialed the air in now it's working really well and i just thinned it down slightly so the 270 likes the paint a little bit thinner to get out the brush the hns on the first mix it was it was thinned down but not as much as the one for the 270 that one atomized it better and that brush is 12 years old and this one's two and a half years old but they're both good brushes i own them both and i tend to jump to this one more because i like the body on it and the way it feels in your hand it's just a lot more user friendly when you're working with it with the mac valve being here than the hns um i'm glad i've got both if you're looking at either guys, both brushes will, will do you really well. They're both worth their money. 
in the price ranges that are coming out. This is coming out about 20 quid cheaper. But if you can afford the 155 and you want two cups, two needle and nozzle setups, a brush that will do what this one will do, they'll both do the same sort of coverage, detail, but you'll find one, I keep steering towards this one for more comfortable and to use here, but if you want a tighter brush to get down with, I'd say the H&S does it. And I've just seen that and I've not picked the H&S up for a long time. And after picking it up, it nailed them. It nailed it down easier with the H&S. It did, then the Creo struggled here going down until I thinned the paint down just thin it down that little bit more and then the Creos came to life. It likes it a little bit thinner. But, lovely trigger on this. Better trigger on this than the H&S. The H&S sits a little bit higher up. This one's nicely low, top down, slope front, and you'll find the trigger on the 270. It's just a lot more comfortable to use. It is out of the two. This is the more comfortable brush. Um, it's hard to say, guys, because I, I own them both. Either brush will serve you right. One's 12 years old, so you know that the Robust on the h &S is gonna last. This is two and a half years old and still performs like it did as it came out the box. So it's still been a good brush two and a half years on and I still use it all the time. So that's my little review on the H&S and the Creos guys. They're both on the website. As I say, all the spares are available on the website for both brushes. Two good brushes guys if you're starting out. I've recommended this to people. People have brought it, came across to the channel and they love it. And I know there are big H&S diehard fans out there. And I was one. Um, I got brought up on H&S in my career coming along. So they last, they work, they're a good brush. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've sort of learned something and it's helped you out along the way. If you're looking at either of these two brushes, as I say, they're both on the website. I'll put the link so you can go straight to the actual brush. You can look at all the write-up. There may even be reviews on these brushes on the actual website. So thanks for watching. Enjoy your H&S or your Creos, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.